Okay, uh, last time we um, at the product handler, you was able to add the product as a function. Right now, uh, and we already prepared some graphic user interface for the um, for the um, uh, data to be loaded. Then right now, I'm gonna add another member, which is load products as a function. And when you look, you don't get anything. Then this one is a data member. And then for this load products, what we're going to do is we're going to use the database handler as well. Access to the database member, we're going to uh, use a read transactions only. Why is it only a read transactions? The reason is, in this case, we only need to read. The previous one, we was accessing to uh, uh, transaction because we would like to insert or modify some database. But this time, we're going to use read transaction only. Um, so that, uh, why? Because um, WebSCAL is going to block the whole database when you do when you run some transaction on it. So it's better uh, uh, if you don't modify the data, you should use the free transaction only, so that multiple transaction can share the uh, database without uh, being blocked. So you, it's it's going to give you some performance then. So for this transaction, we're going to specify a function as transaction callback. Okay. Another functions, let me just show you what is inside there. The web SQL, okay. So we was in some transactions right now. So uh, execute transaction now. Um, database callback, no. Yeah, this one. You, you have transaction callback. Okay, the transaction callback will provide you a transaction. Then uh, next one is the transaction error callback will provide you the uh, um, 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 uh, callback to handle the errors and um, for callback. So in this case, we are going to run a transaction to read data. I may provide some further um, handler, but in this case, I'm not going to provide it. So we, they are optional for the error and, and so they're optional, so I'm not providing it. So I have access to transaction, so I'm going to execute SQL. Okay, so this is an interesting method. When you execute SQL, let's just go to um, this one. Okay, so from the transaction, when you execute SQL, you're gonna get the SQL statement. So this one is when you select everything from product. Okay, then you may need to provide the arguments, and this time we don't have any arguments. Uh, next one will be. What is the next thing? Next thing will be the um, SQL statement callback. Means when you complete the statement, it's gonna get the, it's gonna get you the SQL statement callback is here. Okay, it's gonna get you the transaction itself and the result. Okay, and the result of type SQL result set. So you're going to have uh, the uh, um, callback. This one is transaction callback statement callback with the. Um, with the um, other side, the transaction itself, and the result of type SQL result, and you may have another callback which is of type um, um, error callback. Which means if you have some any errors, it's gonna show you. Okay, so the error callback will give you the transaction and the error. Okay, so this one functions the okay, transaction and the error. So I'm going to deal with the first case, which is easier. We're going to do the console.log. We're going to load the arrow. Arrow while adding, sorry, while selecting the products. Plus arrow.message. Okay. And of course, um, instead of uh, look like this, you may um, alert the to do. Okay. Alert the message. To user instead of console log. Console log is only for pro, um, programmer purpose, and actually you may do some alert message to user showing them that we couldn't load the data with some error. But then so far at development, I'm just gonna put to do over here, and you're gonna change it in the future. Next kind of thing is uh, the result. Okay, so the statement callback. So when it's completed, this statement. It's going to give you back the transaction and the results. Okay, 
and the results. And this result is interesting that we're gonna uh, need to look at. So that result, okay, so it's gonna give you the transaction, okay, and the result which is of type result set, SQL result set. And what is SQL result set? Wanna have a look down there, okay. SQL result set, SQL result set, uh, you could get the insert ID. It's going to give you the insert ID. If your query is about inserting, in this case, we, we are not. It's going to give you routes affected if your query is updating or deleting. And in this case, uh, we are not. And it's going to give you the attribute which is routes. This one is interesting. Okay, it is routes. And uh, this uh, attribute routes is of type SQL result set route list. Okay, SQL result set raw list and the SQL result set raw list will give you the length and the um, um, uh, method which is item to access to each of the item in your data. So with this one, we need to do the display. Okay, we need to do the display. But we shouldn't do the display in the database back um, or database handler. That display I is done in the index so it should be done in it should be done in um, index.js okay this one is for maintainability okay so um, the approach right now is that we're going to uh, we should create a method which is about displaying in index.js and um, you're gonna pass that method to the functions uh, when the function complete it's called to this combat uh, now we're gonna call the display uh, products, okay, and giving it the results, giving it the result. So you should create a display products method over there, okay. Pass it into our method, okay. And when we complete executing this statement, it's going to um, call to the uh, statement call back. And when you call to statement call back, you have the results. When you have the result, you call to the methods from the index that we're gonna code later to display the result. So with this, you are now ready to add the database back up. You are now ready to um, be able to um, access to the result of the SQL query. Okay, and we're going to um, code the display products from the index method later.